in terms of events and merely to teach them in terms of the raising of self-esteem while those things would be important it would not be enough to advance the interest of the race it would possibly not solve the deep educational problems that our children are faced with you say you could possibly be very proudly African and still have problems in mathematics, you know, science and technology, still have problems in human relations and organization, economic and other kinds of development. You know, after you learn that you're African, you still got to learn bookkeeping, you know, and all the other kind of stuff. You got to put it off. You got to have real solid knowledge. You got to have scientific organization. It's not enough to just feel good about your Africanness and to know your history well. As I've often said, you will die black and proud if that's where you stop, you see. You, we're, we're concerned with survival. We're concerned with neutralizing and reducing the Europeans' capacity to perpetrate racism on this earth. And that involves tremendous intellectual growth, tremendous technological development, tremendous economic development, tremendous changes in the way we relate one to another as people, tremendous governmental and other forms of construction. That has to be developed as well. And while history is the beginning point of that, it is not the end point. And if it is not carefully dealt with, it can block that, that further development. We're not, not careful about it. What I think is as important as learning about the events of history and the greatness of our past civilizations and so forth is to delve into what I call the psycho-history of our people, you see. What has that history done to the character and personality, social relations of African people, you see? Slavery was not a mere exploitation of a people's wealth or, a, or of a people's labor. It was not the phys mere physical restraining of a people. It was a process of personality transformation and inculcation into the African body, mind, and soul of a servile personality which was permitted to be quote unquote free after it had been transformed so that in its freedom it would maintain its own oppression and would be an ally against its own growth and development so that its ultimate expression would be self-destruction as we see out here in these streets where people according to their own free will will destroy themselves in terms of taking crack and other kinds of drugs and they will rationalize it in terms of their individual right and freedom to do so. And this, and yet that seed was planted in slavery and built right in. It's often, as I say, the, this period of slavery then was not merely a period here of constraint upon our people. But was a period of transformation, was the period during which the African was turned into the nigger. I often refer to it as the niggerization of the African. And of course we, can, we are going to look a little further back today in how that process started even earlier. How to a degree this enslavement of our people was set up by a niggerization of the Africa on the African continent in the name of religion. Yes, we have, to, we have to look at it for what it is and deal with it. In the name of accepting other people's ideologies and other people's interpretations of God and other people's, you know, political and other philosophies without examining them closely. And we will see that and that's what I'm going to talk about a bit today.